Yo, what's cracking with the people? What's popping with the nation? What's popping with y'all, man? It's Rashad and Dave in the building. Dave, what's good with you, man? What you doing, scaring our, scaring off the, scaring the chat cats, man? What you doing, scaring the chat cats with this title, man? You out here talking about premium? Oh no, nah. we got it. I mean, premium. hey, listen, Pre the, the premium veteran. The Twitter As if streets. I tried to warn you guys a few weeks ago. This the could be a possibility. The Twitter streets were ablaze. The Twitter streets were set ablaze. Uh, and we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it, Dave. Uh, listen, what? I, listen, and we'll talk about it. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna warn you. I'm gonna sell you like I always. Are you do. gonna pot? I don't try to win the short term battles. I try to win the long term battles. I try to tell you guys that we might pay for a guy. Now I was trying to. Prepare you guys to brace yourselves for this shit. But we're going to get into it. We yes, shall we get into it. We are going to get but into yeah, it. But yeah, man. How was your weekend, bro? Even though we, we talked Sunday because we had the draft. Yeah, we did, yeah, we did talk Sunday. Uh, nothing much here, man. Chilling. Like it that way. Uh, ne next couple weeks, though, D Dan's dad is, is going to get cracking. So got to do a lot of traveling. First competition mm -hmm. in Raleigh. So I'll be in Raleigh. The second and third weekend of March, then South Carolina, and then all over the place. So it, it doesn't stop from that point on. So trying to enjoy these last couple weekends of uh, nothing to do because it's about to be a wrap from here on out. Uh, but what's good? What's good, everybody? What's good? The whole chat. We almost at two hundred on click. I like I like having two hundred right when I hit the click to bring into the show. But we almost there on one ninety seven. Make sure you hit that like button on the way in. Hit the like button. Get the likes up. Uh, let's get the likes cracking. Uh, and hit that subscribe button if you are if you aren't a subscriber to this channel. I know twenty percent of you are not, according to the analytics. Uh, so hit that subscribe button for your boy. Help us get to twenty thousand subscribers. We got to get there by the draft. Let's let's get this thing. Let's get this thing cracking. I just I just want you to know that this is hilarious to me, and I think Rashad understands. Why. Yeah, that is funny. Yeah, Dave been <laughs> like that since I known him. Dave has been like that since I known Dave, which is fun. That is very funny. That's what we Especially call it. Y'all well, know what my fraternity brothers call me. I finna say that's what, for the for the street. Can I say it, Dave? Go ahead. No, that's fine. Oh, okay. So for the streets, the, like we all call Dave Uncle Dave because he been like that. He always been acting like somebody uncle, yo. That's that's funny that you say that, but that's what we call Uncle D uh, Dave is Uncle Dave. So <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> the streets now know. The streets now know. But uh, but yeah, man. All right. Uh, how was your weekend, Dave? Good. No, nah, it was good, man. You know, I, like you know, I, I got back from uh CIAA weekend. I drove back Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Phenomenal week down in Baltimore. Daughter had some college tours. We did some college tours. Hit up a couple HBCUs. Hit up a couple uh, but we also went to John Hopkins and Townsend too. So we got to check out some pretty nice universities while we're down. I went to Howard. Went to Morgan. Went to Coppin. Went to Delaware State. With the Townsend, with the John Hopkins. Then we checked out the CIAA tournament. You know, my daughter checked out the Battle of the Bears. She never seen something like that in her life. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Winston Salem State and Elizabeth City State University. They both won their tournaments, men's and women's, respectively, for the CIAA. Um, but nah, man, it was a pretty good weekend. Can't complain too much. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right, Dave. Let's go ahead and get into this content. Because uh, your man's, your man's Dan Orlovsky. Set the Twitter streets ablaze yesterday, um, and it's cool. It's cool when he do it. It's a problem when we say it though, Dave, because this man has been saying what I've been saying for the longest time, right? The Panthers. He, I'll, I'll summarize it, and if, if I don't get it right, we'll play it. But I'll pretty much summarize what he said. He was on NFL Network and basically said that the Panthers are ESPN, a, right? Whatever, in a, NFL Network, whatever, NFL whatever it was. Yeah. One of them, one of them. Uh, and basically said a lot to say that the Panthers are a quarterback away. That's essentially what he said. He said that the division's trash. You you are a, a stone's throw away from the, from the playoffs just by getting a quarterback. So he said, and keep in mind, Orlovsky was uh, – on, in route to almost becoming a member of our staff. He respect, respectfully declined the offer, uh, but he was almost on our staff. So he kind of knows, I think he kind of knows what's going on in the building. 
Um, I'm not not saying he knows the plan, but he definitely had mentioned something about a plan. Uh, and he knows, I guess he assumes he knows what the Panthers are going to do. Now, I've been saying this since day one. Go go up, get your quarterback. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Because three or four years from now, nobody's going to care about those picks we gave up because the quarterback that we're going to get is going to be balling. That's the hope, right? If you execute properly, that's the hope. Now, here's where, here's where it gets, and this is where you got to debate it, right? Because Panthers fans, I find it, you guys are really confusing. Panther fans are really confusing, Dave. You, and you got to help me with this, the Panther, the Panther fan logic. Because, all right, it's one thing to trade up and get Stroud, right? That's cool. Trade up and get Stroud. Nobody wants to do that, right? Nobody wants to go. So, some of y'all don't want to do that. Nobody wants to trade the, the whole package to go up and get CJ Stroud. Okay, that's that's option one because guess what? They're afraid all of our draft capital is gone. Blah 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 blah. Dave, so in that, if we don't, let's hypothetically let's talk this out and help me out with this, Dave. So let's say hypothetically we don't trade up to get a CJ Stroud. Then what? Right? Then what happens? You're left with a Bryce Young potentially, right? Who everybody's saying he's too short. You're left yeah, with exactly. a. You, you, and, and he does not fit the the mold that Reich has said. We we said that countless times. Yep. Then, then nobody wants Levis. No, we found that out on Sunday. None of y'all want Levis. <laughs> right? None of y'all want oh, Levis. Oh, before before we even get keep going, for those who did not watch on Sunday, we shout out to Walk the Mock. We did a we did a live mock draft with other YouTubers. We tried to trade up after. We tried to trade up. We couldn't trade up. The Colts trade up to one. They took Stroud. Young was gone. Seattle ended up taking Richardson. So we were sitting there at nine. The only quarterback left was Levis. And we took him, and y'all were not happy. The right. chat was not thrilled. Right. So go, going back to the point, right? CJ Stroud. Let's we don't let's hypothetically let's talk this out because a lot of y'all have prop a, a lot of y'all you you have the the I'm about to pie day. Because a lot of y'all Y'all think one way, but then when you start to lay out the, the the consequences of said thought process, then that's when ish gets real. Nobody thinks about it. So let, let me, I'm out the pod. Okay, here we go. So you don't want to trade up to get CJ Stroud, but then you don't want Bryce Young because he's too short. You don't want Will Levis because he's trash. Then you don't, you don't want, you don't want AR-15 either because you, then what happens when you take AR-15? Guess what you're going to take? A bridge quarterback. Nobody wants any of the bridge quarterbacks because they want the quarterback to start day one. Your only day one starting option is CJ Stroud. If you don't want to get him, then deal with the consequences. That's the consequences, right? Because guess guess what the alternative is, Dave? If you don't do any of that, guess what? You're signing Derek a Carr. Veter- and nobody, nobody wants to do that. Nobody wants to do that either. Nobody wants Derek Carr. Nobody wants to pay Derek Carr. Nobody wants... Nobody wants to give up the hall to get Lamar Jackson. Like, talk it out. Like, as you talk this out, does this? What are your options, bro? Like, what? Legitimately, give me your options, bro. Here's my thing, and I've said this: we're going to have to sign a vet. It's just a matter of which one we're going to sign. I said this weeks ago. This notion that we're not going to sign a vet that's not going to be potentially starting week one is asinine to me. We're going to sign somebody. Derek Carr, Sam Darnold, Jacoby Brissett. We're signing somebody, guys. And the odds are really high that he might be that week one starter. Like, that's the reality of it. We're going to sign somebody. Like, I think it's unrealistic to think that AR15 AR is going to be ready week one. I think that's unrealistic. That's not happening. Think, yeah, AR-15 is not going he's to not be, gonna be ready week start. one. That's not so, going to be realistic. But they, but they don't want that, Dave, because guess what's going to have to happen? We found out Sunday. We're going to have to trade up to get AR-15. Oh, and if AR-15 does not start week one, oh, the, oh why did we tra- – Oh, hell, oh, break loose. We traded up to get a sit on the bench. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my oh my goodness. That's, that's what y'all are going to do, right? <laughs> and nobody wants to – I think this is – to truth be told, if if we if we get Richardson, 
I think this on the screen is 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 the best option because I don't think Jacoby Brissett is going to cost us that much, right? I don't think he's going to cost a terrible amount, right? So I think that's a cool. But nobody want, is going to want us as soon as Jacoby Brissett starts messing up, y'all going to be screaming AR fifteen to put him out there before he's ready, and then it's going to be it's going to be a a, a crash. You're going to ruin him. Like, and you guys don't want Levis, but he ain't a week one guy either. Like, guys, like, and I don't think, and I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to draft Bryce. I really don't. Like, I think if Bryce is sitting there or not, I don't think we're going to draft him. And I don't know what the hell y'all going to do if we decide not to draft no quarterback at nine. If we just sit pat at nine and don't draft a quarterback at all, I don't know what this fan base will do. Cause there could be a, there is a legitimate scenario where we could wait for Hooker in the second. That's a, that is a scenario. That, that is, is a legitimate scenario. scenario. Legi- it like, is legitimate. I, that is a legitimate scenario. And I and I, to be honest, I think I would rather do that than take Levis. And I said that on the show last week. I said that on you the did. show on Sunday. You did. So I'd rather do that because you guys are attacking my man over this age. The injury is legitimate. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock that. The age ain't is legitimate once you start digging a little bit. Because Levis is 23. He going to be 24 soon. Hooker just turned 25 in January. Ain't that big of a deal to me. Yeah. So, yeah, no. Yeah, no, I, I ain't got an issue taking that man in a second. That's just my opinion. I, I just, th- I think that there's just, if you don't, if you don't trade, and, and why, if people are asking why we still looking at Dan Olofsky, because it all goes back to the point. Olofsky said, Yo, you go up and get your guy. Go up and get a quarterback. Trade up, do what you got to do to get a quarterback. That's essentially what he said. And so I, I I have been saying that since day one. And people are talking about, and again, the I, I hear you. Because if you listen to the rumors, right, the Bears want to stay within the top five. We are not in the top five. So they're not going to trade all the way back to nine unless that deal is massive. Like, this got to be a deal that they cannot refuse. And I don't see that happening. So the, the the thing is, is that we we won't be able to get up to one because simply because the Bears don't want to do business with us. With us, they want to do business with the Colts to stay within the top five. So it makes sense if they want to move up. So it it ain't looking too good for us getting C, uh, CJ Stroud. So y'all got to We got to get into the mindset of what happens after that. What happens? What happens if we don't get CJ Stroud? Right, and so. Do do are y'all cool with the with us? And I don't I don't think this is I don't think it's a, there's a scenario where we and you could you could tell me tell me if I'm wrong, Dave. But do you see a scenario where we trade up to get a quarterback, whether it's AR15 or whoever or Young, I don't know whoever it is, and then still sign a Derek Carr? No, that's two well, major. We're gonna sign. We're gonna sign. We're gonna sign a vet. We're gonna sign a no, vet. I'm but talking. I don't think I'm talking. I'm talking premium. When I say premium, I mean I mean oh, guy no. like like Derek no. Carr, no, or Garoppolo or something like somebody one of these big bag quarterbacks, not the mid bags, no. the big bags. Mm 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 mm. I don't. But I will say this: we gonna know what we're gonna do before the draft anyway, because that number one pick's gonna be traded before the draft. That number three trick's gonna probably gonna be traded. The Cardinals pick probably gonna be traded before the draft too. So we gonna know what it is. Ani says Malik Cunningham in the second round. Nah, I'm I'm cool is. on that. I'm cool on Malik Cunningham. I'm cool on that. Appreciate that super chat though. Did I miss some? I think I missed some. Carson said uh, Levis. Levis thinks he going to Carolina. That's what his roommate said. I mean, hell, if you were watching Twitter, you would think it too. You would think it too. The way the Twitterverse is, is talking. Uh, underground, underground Kang. Appreciate the Underground Kang. I like that. I Kang. get it. I see what you, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. A little double, triple entendre there. Uh, appreciate that super chat, fam. I'm scrolling up to get the rest of the the, the uh, super chats that I missed. Uh, Noli says, get your uh, get your rookie QB. If fail, go get Lamar. Simple. Uh, I don't think that's – it's free agency. No, nah, I don't – well, uh, yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen in the order of event, uh, events that we would want. Um, uh, it could happen. I just don't know. So that let's talk about that let's way. talk about the Lamar situation for a second. Let's talk about it because because the thing about Lamar is interesting because that deads the entire concept of drafting a quarterback if we go trade for Lamar because you're gonna have to give up at least two maybe three first round picks to go get him. That's yeah. the reality of it, guys. That's what's well, gonna he's take. young though. No, no, and yeah, yeah, he's young. 
Has some injury history, but he is young. But he's never played with this receiver core. But the receiver core that we have is the best receiver core he's ever had. And, you know, so from that aspect, it gets interesting if we make the decision to go up against Lamar. And I don't have an issue with it because I'd rather us have him than over Atlanta. So uh, it's going to be interesting, but we're going to have to pay him. Um, just remember that one of the reasons why we didn't trade for Deshaun Watson was because besides the fact that Deshaun didn't have us as the top pick, the other fact was that Tebow was not interested in giving a fully guaranteed contract to the man. Those were the two elements of the situation at hand. So right. that's another thing you need to consider because we know that Lamar Jackson wants all that guaranteed money. So just remember that as well. He wants more than what Deshaun Watson got. And he deserves more than what Deshaun As he Watson should. Got. Yeah, I was going to say, he sh- as he should. Yeah. He should absolutely uh, get that bag. So just keep that in mind. Just, just, just things to, to just lay out on the table for you guys. Yeah. So... Uh, I, this, this quarterback thing, man, I, I want to get it over with because I'm tired. First of all, I'm tired of debating it. I'm t- I'm really tired of talking about the quarterback. Dog, it's too early to be tired. I know, Shit, I know. I, we yet. just get. I know, we just get. We just the last day of Black History Month. You out here talking I about you tired? <laughs> Shit. We just left the Legacy Bowl. The Legacy Bowl last oh, weekend. You man. out here tired? You you out here yeah, tired? I'm, yeah, man. You know, I'm, you know, I'm you can't be tired yet. It, I just want to get a quarterback, bro. We ain't even released. We ain't released the Blue Bloods video to the public yet. You out here talking about you tired. We got to do that. Yeah, we got to do that. Yeah, we, uh, that Will we need to do that this week. Will Levis is the pocket passer that we need that can occasionally scramble. Yeah, he, he got the he got the legs. He can scoot. He can scoot. Uh, don't be surprised, but Le- Levis, AR-15, or Scott, will, are, I'm assuming that's a Will Skyrocket in the Combine and Pro Day. Hooker will be an afterthought. I do think AR-15 is going to dest- absolutely destroy the Combine. Uh, I don't know about Levis, uh, but I know AR-15 is going to body the combine. That's why it, it, all the top 10, the the 11, where I picked him at in the mock draft yesterday, the, and pick 11, that's not happening. He's going to shoot into the top 10. Somebody's going to move up to get him. He's going to skyrocket. That's why yeah, you, yeah, you no. got to get into the, the top four, three. The four quarterbacks the four quarterbacks are going to go in the top 10, bro. And I would, yo, and truth be told, y'all, y'all ain't going to like this shit. I wouldn't be shocked if all four might be going before they come to us at nine. <laughs> Bro, we, I mean, we saw that we, you could re- make a legit scenario because what people are not talking about, and this is why I don't like, I don't like looking at scenarios because people are like, they're taking the, the draft and they're saying, oh, this person, this team doesn't need a quarterback. This team doesn't need a quarterback. This team doesn't need a quarterback. Oh, we might be able to get, oh, this team might need a quarterback. But, but that doesn't account for any trades that might happen. Like people trade up all the time to get quarterbacks. You're not accounting for that. So it's literally a crapshoot. You can't predict where quarterbacks are going to go, uh, and that's why you got to go get one. That's why you can't play around with it. If you want a quarterback, you're going to have to go get him because somebody else will. So looking at the draft board and the way it sits now, is that's stupid. It's dumb because it's going to change. Somebody's going to trade up, and it messes up your whole draft board. That's what happened Sunday when the Colts traded up. The Colts traded up. They got uh, C.J. Stroud. And then uh, Bryce Young went, and then uh, pick three, I think, uh, pick four, AR-15 went, or uh, he went to five, excuse me. AR-15 went five, went five. and we, we was we was waiting. We was trying to wait for AR-15, and boom, he was gone. And it, if if they wouldn't have done it, somebody else would have probably moved up to go get him. So you can't, you can't predict what's going to happen. You literally cannot predict what's going to happen. If you want somebody, go get them. That's why I've been on that. That thing, the uh, I've been on the whole trade up scenario. Let's trade up. Let's make it happen. Let's do it. Don't. I, I can't say what I want to say, but don't play around with it. Just do it. Just do it. Um. So any anything else on this or- Orlovsky and his and his uh, thoughts about the quarterback? No, nah, I'm with it, man. I get it. I completely get it. There were some folks who thought that we should have hired him, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, like, well, I we don't that know. Was a, that was a. That's a crazy take. Like, we don't know. I, I think, they, they, now, don't get me wrong. I think Olasley knows the stuff when it comes to breaking down film. Like, one of the reasons why I like watching NFL Live is when they start breaking down, like, the offenses and the defenses and the schemes. Like, that's a lost art that ESPN doesn't do enough of. Because, like, NFL Matchup used to be one of my favorite shows to watch as a, as a kid. Because they did a lot more film breakdowns. But now they show that shit at 2 o'clock in the morning. So, I ain't never, normally not up to watch it. So, 
you know, so overall, man, like he's really good at what he does. Um, but it'll be interesting to see. I, I, I think Josh McCown is capable too. He's got more coaching experience than um than Orlowski does. But now nah, let's move on. All right. So I know we talked about Derek Carr a little bit, but the rumor on the the rumor on the streets, the word on the street is that we will be talking to Derek Carr at the combine. Dave, uh is this just due diligence? Is there is there smoke? Is there fire leading up to this? Is what 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 do you think what is going on with this confirmed rumor that we're going to talk to uh Derek Carr at the combine? I mean, we're in on every deal, right? And of course we're That's gonna talk to him. It. I mean, we're gonna talk to him because we gotta have an idea of whether or not it's feasible. Um, but it's not when well, he ain't gonna just talk to us either. He's talking to multiple teams. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna check and see what his options are because he. I mean, right now it looks like it's, it's it's leaning towards Saints, bro, and it could be Seattle because there's a possibility that Seattle might not sign resign Geno Smith. Yeah, there's a couple teams where he could go. Um, but we're gonna have an we'll, we'll have an idea soon enough. All right, I just wonder. I, I just wonder what if it doesn't make sense to me. Shout out, ooh, big super chat here. Shout out to A Cash. Says if Seattle does not resign Geno, they're then they're taking a QB. Washington could trade up, maybe Tennessee too. Combine, uh, combine that with uh, so ready for the combine to come up. Combine that with Houston, Indy, ATL, and Vegas being ahead of us means we definitely need to trade up for a QB. One thousand percent agreed. Uh, basically said exactly what I was saying. You got to trade up to get your guy. If you want him, go up, go get him. Go up and get him. Go up and get him. Um, but uh, what was I about to say? Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Something about Derek nah, Carr. You're talking about the Derek oh, Carr. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So so Derek Carr. Um, my my whole thing is, is if, if it was going to be with the Saints, why, why not let yourself be traded there? Maybe he doesn't want that. the Raiders to get any picks. Well, that's stupid. It's supposed to be about I your didn't money. Say, I didn't say it was rational. I'm just telling you what it is. Maybe he feels like he's going to get more. Maybe he felt like, maybe it might be a situation where the Saints was like, yo, I don't think I can pay you what we were about to pay you. Maybe the Saints was like, you got to reach, you got to, we got to redo this deal. And maybe he didn't like the numbers that the Saints was offering. It could be a lot of scenarios of what could have happened there, man. But we'll see. I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things, or it could have been a situation where the Saints wasn't willing to give up enough capital to the Raiders for the trade. Knowing that they're going to have to release them anyway because we knew that they're not going to pay that $40 million for right. that roster bonus because it was fully guaranteed at a certain point. It could have been a lot of reasons why. You know, because he had no trade clause. But, man, I, you know, it's he, he can pick where he's going to get the go. Um, we'll find out whether or not it's a mistake soon enough um, with regards to where he's going to end up. But I, I, I stand by what I said. If I was him, he'd be foolish not to come to Carolina. Foolish. Well, I think I think it's going to come down to, which is why I think we're meeting with him. I, I think this is, first of all, I think it's due diligence. I think they're just trying to see what, what the vibes are. I don't know how serious, man, Federer don't be playing. I, yeah, I, I know he probably going to throw out an offer and he probably going to be like, take it or leave it. But I think with um, I think it all is gonna, it, for for Carolina and Derek Carr to work, it's gonna boil down to money, right? It's got because we're not we're not gonna be able to pay him the most. Uh, we're not gonna be able to, to to make that happen. I think he's got he's gonna have better options uh, with the Jets. Uh, Jets probably can pay him. I don't I don't know who everybody's cap scenario or cap situation. Excuse me, uh, but I think there are better. I, I know the Falcons can pay if the Falcons want. Derek Carr, then I'm sure they could pay him. Just Marcus Mariota. Right. So, I don't know. Are the Falcons talking to Derek Carr, too? I think they are. I, I got to check the list. There's a, there's a tweet about it. But one thing's certain, bro. If Dan Olarski said that we're a quarterback away, if we're truly a quarterback away, just saying. Sorry, Derek it's Carr's it's not White terrible. Right, White Chocolate Espresso says uh, Falcons like Ritter. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know if he likes Ritter that damn much. Not to the point where you're you're ready to to um Jets, Saints, Panthers. Those are the three teams. Jets, Saints. 
Yeah. I, of those, I don't know who has the most. I mean, not that it matters. I don't, I don't know. And I again, I don't think the Panthers would be in a situation to offer him like a longer term deal. I think that the Jets yeah. probably have the best scenario for him. Yes, the Jets can pay him the most if he's trying to get the bag. I don't think. Well, I don't think it's more. about paying. I don't think it's about the pay. I think it's more about the longevity of the deal, right? I think the Panthers are trying to bridge their way. They're, they're trying to bridge their way to a, a longer term quarterback. If I if it's if, if, if it's about if it's about if for Derek Carr, if it's about having a shot to to get to a Super Bowl quickly, then it's us. We got a roster that's closer than any other team that's on the list. Let's keep it a buck. We're closer than the Jets, and we got a we got a closer path. We got a, a a smoother path too. The Jets in the AFC, bro. Are you serious? With Buffalo in your division, with in yeah. Miami, then you still got to get through Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. And the rest of the AFC gauntlet. That's true. What are we talking about here? I, that's Saints. why. That's that's why I think he's gonna end up in the South. I don't know what team, but I think he's gonna end up in the South. Whether it's us or the Saints, I think he will ultimately end up in the South. No, the Jets I, roster's got a pre- the Jets got a pretty good roster. I'm not doubting the how good the roster the Jets have, but it doesn't change the fact that the the Jet and by the way, he'll have an offensive mind of coach who's known to improve quarterback play from every quarterback that he's had, like. Versus the Jets has got to go through a gauntlet. They got to go through a division that has Buffalo and Miami in it. And then you got to get through the Bengals. In the playoffs, you got to get through the Bengals, the Bills, the, the Jags, the Chiefs, the Chargers. Like, you got a bigger type of challenge in front of you. The Ravens, if they keep Lamar, if they keep Lamar, the Steelers, who are always in it. The man's never had a losing season. Like you got a bigger, you got a, you got a, a path, you got a tougher path to get to the playoffs. And Cleveland, who should be good next year, should be good next year. Now with Watson, so we'll see. Yeah. Would you, so, would you take Car for twenty five million a year, bro? I think no, I, 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 I don't. That's too much. No, I'm not. Man, I don't mil? want. Him. I don't want him. You don't want him. Period. I want. I want to get a young quarterback. That's what I want. I take the little one year bridge with whoever it is, Jacoby, whoever you name to get us whatever. I want a long I'm tired of playing around with it. Pause. Go ahead and get us a, a long term solution to quarterback. I didn't say New England because they're they're done, guys. Oh my fault. My fault. No, they're done. The Patriots are done. They might not yo, there's talks that they there there might be they might be thinking about getting rid of Mac Jones already. Like they're they're done so. Yeah. Yeah. K yeah, K H Luke Mr. says uh there's no way the Panthers are QB away with Ian Thomas running towards the sideline for one point three yards every time he get the ball. That's funny. That's funny. And see this is why but this is a great point. It kind of segues into my thought process and why I don't want Derek Carr. Because that twenty five million, I want to take that and put it elsewhere. This uh, this team does have other gaps. Don't get it twisted. Like, don't get it twisted. We got other gaps on this roster. So in free agency, I want to sign another defensive end. I want to sign potentially another safety. I want to sign. Maybe we can trade for uh for Jalen Ramsey. I want to get another uh, interior linebacker. Like, I want to get another wide receiver, a tight end. Like, there's so many other places I could put that money. Instead of Derek Carr, when I can, I know I want to draft a quarterback, get him on a rookie deal. When I'm thinking about team from a team builder standpoint, it Carr just does not make sense to me. It does not make sense. Doesn't make short term sense, and it doesn't make long term sense to me. I don't see. I don't. I just don't see it happening. And, and I, trust me, I get it. Like I go, I get them going to talk to him during the, the senior bowl or during the combine. I get it. Like you see, you getting the vibes. Maybe he might change his mind from the last time you spoke to him. Blah 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 blah. I get it. I get all that, but to me, it just does not. It just does not make sense for us to get Derek Carr right now when there's so many other things we could fill uh, and and, and uh, bolster this roster so that when we do get a rookie quarterback, he's in a good position to succeed. Yeah, bingo! Shout out to Jared. He he worded it correctly. He stops you from progressing. That's exactly right. It it, it prevents you from then because you're paying him this bag for the next four years, right? That you're not going to build, so you're not going to get – first of all, you're not going to get a young quarterback. 
You're not going to be able to get those free agents that you want. It's just it just doesn't make sense to me. It do you think he's going to get? A, do you think he's going to get a long term deal? I don't think he's going to get the long term deal he thinks he's going to get. Uh, I really don't. I think the Saints. I don't think he's going to get what he wants. I think the Saints. No way. You think he's going to get a? You think they're going to give him like a five or a six year deal? I think they would. No way. I think they would. I really think they would. I don't think he's getting more than three years from anybody. I don't think he's getting more than three years. Now, he might get mostly guaranteed money for those three years, but I don't think he's getting more than three years. That's my opinion. Then that's even worse. Because that's money you got to pay out. That ain't going nowhere. Yeah, but the thing is, it'll be interesting because remember, how many years our head coach contract is? Four years, right? Four years. I'm not. Yeah, there's no way I'm signing a four year deal for Derek Carr. When my it is not, I'm not signing. I'm not no putting way. my coach career on. Years, nah, I'm not doing that, bro. I'm not doing that. Not doing it. Not doing it. But anyway, all right. Let's move on from Derek Carr, man. We we'll, again, yeah, we're gonna meet. I mean, with him while, you, the while we move on, while you move on, they go from uh, one last, one last thing. It boils down to the expectations of David Tepper and what he expects out of Frank Rice and how fast he expects him to be successful with this team. Like I think people forget about that piece too. And I and I and I know we always say, well, you got to give him time. You got to give him time, bro. Tepper ain't yo. Tepper ain't exactly been part of the patient. And Frank didn't exactly talk like somebody that has plenty of time either. But but you know, you know, he didn't exactly talk like he had like he didn't talk like he had the whole plan. Let's put it to you that way. Without naming names, he didn't talk like he had the whole plan. No, nah, he ain't he got like the he had seven, seven years. years seven no, no, no. Years he ain't got, he ain't got seven plan. years. No, no, no. He ain't talk that. No. He ain't, he ain't talking like he got the whole plan. He he, he, talk, he talking like he got the, the baby plan, which means he got to hurry up and get this this money fast before he says something stupid and get, get out on, the bank. Come on, man. Shout out to the baby, man. Chill. Charlotte, Charlotte, man. Charlotte on the mat. I, I know. Right. I know. It, it, Everybody it, can't be J. Cole. If I say, you know that, you know that. All right. Shout keep out moving. to Cole, man. Shout out to Cole. <laughs> Just announced our Dreamville shot. Yeah, shot to, yeah, uh, that that uh, that headliner for the second day is now yeah. pretty nice. I will say, Drizzy, Drizzy, and and, and, the, and the first one, Usher, bro. Come on, man. Yo, well, right. I've seen Usher live, so for me, it's I like, gotta I'm I gotta go to catch picture. Usher. I gotta go catch Usher in Vegas because that I heard that show was crazy. Yeah, you like I caught Usher Roots Pitnick. He had live with the Roots, so yeah, Usher and the Roots was re- insanity. insanity. Yeah, Usher, so, yeah. Usher up there for me, man. Pause. Top, yeah, he gotta be to, top. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, need to, up there. you need to catch I'll that. But anyway, all right, let's move on. Uh, Derek Carr has had three head coaches in the interim. Pause. Who is the constant in this narrative? No use Carr. This is a genius hashtag. I love it. I see what you did there. I'm with you. I'm no use cars for me either. All right. Uh, shout out to Mike Todd. He says, major pause on the Cam versus AR-15 comps. Uh, I hope AR grows to, to, grows to success, but Cam was much better college prospect. We need temper expectations and Aggie pride. Aggie pride all day. Aggie pride, man. Aggie pride. Good faithful. I got to check out the Good Faithful podcast. Appreciate that. Aggie pride. Yeah, man. I, the Cam AR-15 comparisons, we can't do How that. How do we do this? We can't do How that. do we do this? We can't do that. I understand why. Nope. 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 Can't do it. Why? Why, Dave? Because he's 6'5 and he's black? Is that why? No, 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 no. Well, y'all, want me, no. y'all want me to pot. No, no, pot. no, no, no. I think it's more about the fact that he he doesn't, he does everything. That's why. He's not as accurate coming out of college. That's why. There were some cops to Josh Allen, too. But the 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 thing about the the thing about that cop is He's actually more accurate than what Josh Allen was coming out of college. But it's still not. But I think folks don't realize how big of a transition Josh Allen had when he got into the league to fix his accuracy problems that he got once he got into the NFL. Um, But, I mean, I get it, but I'm like, don't do that. No, No, but you you don't get it. I don't get it. No, I don't get it. There is no – yo, what Cam did in college – was it you? You ain't topping it, bro. No, it was if the greatest college season ever. No, no, no. If you that was watching Cam in college, there is no comparison. Ever. 
There's no comparison between AR-15 and Can. Let's not do that. Let's not. I, I get it. I, I don't get it. And I see why people are doing it because he's 6'5 and he runs the rock and he's black. That's why they're doing it. Outside of that, there's no other reason to compare the two. Let's chill. Let's chill. All right. And, so, he, take, um, and he takes punishment. Uh, he take, he, and he's, and he, take, he, he looks for the hit. White Chocolate Espresso. Some people need to look up Cam stats and AR stats. Hey, look, man. Um, shout out to y'all. Y'all super chats is going crazy. Y'all, y'all super chatting a lot today. I want to say I appreciate that. I appreciate that, man. So shout out to uh shout out to all y'all at super chatting today, man. All right. Um let uh let's move on. Let's move on. All right, real quick, shout out because we got some other stuff to talk about. Shout out to all uh our social media at Pethanish PC on Twitter, TikTok, all that good stuff. Want to become a Patreon member, patreon.com forward slash Pethanish PC. Check us out. Shout out to all the MVPs. Got a giveaway. Uh, I got to do MVP giveaway, and I don't have the 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 the, the wheel. I got what I want to give away, but I don't have the wheel uh, set up. So I might have to do that later in the show, or I'll do it next week. But shout out to the uh, MVP. Shout out to the franchise folks, and shout out to the free agents. One thing is going to happen this year, though, uh, while I'm on this Patreon thing, is that the autographs. I'm going to hopefully get them sooner because I heard that the gate, the fence by the the practice field is back open. Um, so now that that's back open, I can go during OTAs. I could go during rookie mini camp when it's not as crowded and go out there and get some autographs. So that's the plan. Hopefully I have a lot more autographs this year. Like we did prior to the pandemic before the pandemic, man, I, I had so much stuff to give away, but the pandemic shut everything down. Didn't have as much stuff to give away, but hopefully we'll get back to that. We'll get back to that. So shout out to all, all the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Patreon members. Real quick, let me get through this um, through this underdog fantasy zone. What's going on, guys? This is Dave from PNP, and I'm here to talk to you about underdog fantasy. I just want to remind you that it's the easiest place to play. There ain't too many places where you can win 20 times your money in the same night, utilizing higher lowers in the pick'em game. And now they have pick'em insurance, where while you won't win the same amount of money that you did before, you can miss one and still bring home some money. So if you do it three times, you could potentially still get your money back if you end up missing one. Go to underdogfantasy.com and sign up today and use the code PNP when you do. And the hundred dollar deposit match still stands. Underdog Fantasy. Baseball is now approaching, ladies and gentlemen. They do baseball too. And they do drafts for baseball as well. And the big tournament right now is the Dinger. Over five hundred thousand dollars in prizes is about you know it's about halfway filled right now. Um, only cost ten dollars to enter. So I know some of you guys don't just watch football. And baseball season is approaching. They also do UFC. There's a big fight coming up this weekend. So check them out. They do over unders when it comes to rounds of somebody's going to get knocked out, things of that sort. The number of strikes, whole nine when it comes to that. So check out Underdog Fantasy and make sure you use the code PNP when you do. Shout out to underdog, man. Homies. Dave, this this move that we talked to, or that we that happened yesterday, uh, we signed uh Adrian Wilson to become our vice president of player personnel. This is such a great hire. Uh, and it should not be glanced over because this guy was highly, I mean, he's gonna be a GM one day. Let's 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 keep it a buck. He's going to be a GM, which is going to help with us getting some draft capital back. I have a question for you, Dave, because you are very critical of the Rooney rule. And you see what the Panthers are doing, right? Mm -hmm. You see what the Panthers are doing with the, with now Adrian Wilson, Evero, Thomas Brown, Deuce Staley, a lot of, a lot of minorities on the staff right now. Are you still in your stance that it ain't a good thing? I Oh, absolutely. I am. I'm not going to change my stance on that. Only because I don't... I, I think it's it hasn't improved the numbers of getting more minority hires at head coaching positions. I think it's improved it on the general management spots probably more than head coaches right now as of late, mm. believe it or not. But it hasn't improved it from the head coaching position. Um, so, no, I, I stand by what I said. I'm not changing that stance. I'm now that being no, no, yeah, but that now that being said, the Panthers 
I commend Tepper has one of the most diverse executive offices in the league, and I commend him for that. Um, and he's continuing that by by um, bringing Adrian in, and um, so it is going to be a good thing for us as a franchise because they're going to keep the Rooney Rule. And Tepper realizes, well, shit, if you're going to keep the Rooney Rule, I might as well keep keep doing this because you still hire good people that can do the job well. If these folks stay here for two years, now you get some kind of draft compensation that could build your team. And that's what the 49ers have been doing. Shit, might as well keep doing it. Yeah. I find this interesting, too, because if I recall correctly, he almost became the GM of the Jacksonville Jaguars when Byron Leftwich well, yeah. almost became Byron, the head coach. No, no, Byron wanted him he as wanted the GM. Him. They want, he wanted that package deal, but I think the Jaguars didn't want that, which is why Leftwich did not take ultimately take the job. I think that's mm-hmm. what happened with Leftwich mm-hmm. and, and the Jaguars. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. This guy is – and you, and you listen to the players, and I think this is what excites me about this, this pickup uh, because he's the vice president of player personnel. So what does that mean? It's about – typically that position is, uh, is, is to get – uh, it's it's a player relations type position, right? He's this guy is so cool with so like you hear Patrick Peterson talk about this guy. He's I mean it was a clip floating around with Patrick Peterson thanking him, uh, you know, and want to like go in his footsteps. I think a lot of p- players rock with this cat in general, mm-hmm. and so this is not just about you know oh getting the black guy. Like this guy is really like he's, he's respected really in the good guy. Yeah, he's a really oh, yeah. respected he's guy. Respected in the league. Played yeah, in the so, for years. Yep, a long career, successful career. I think mm-hmm. like a three time, three time uh, All Pro, five time Pro Bowler. Like this mm-hmm. guy was a good player, and I think this is an excellent hire. And again, we talk about we talk about the the the, the front office and the and the head coach and all the, the the staff. Yo, there's no salary cap when it comes to that stuff. And so we're, I, I'm sure we, I, and he had a reason to come here, right? The, the, didn't work out with the Cardinals. He's from North Carolina. He went. He was born and raised in High Point. Shout out to High Point. And he was. Um, with the Andrews, he was right? uh, at High Point Andrews High School and went to NC mm-hmm. State. So he's a Carolina guy. He spent damn near twenty years with the Cardinals. You know, f- playing and you know, executive. But you know, this guy, I really, really, really like this hire, bro. I really like this hire for sure. Uh, this, I think, this is an excellent hire because mm-hmm. th- again, stays two years. And he gets hired somewhere else, which I think is inevitable because he's that type of guy and he's coveted. Um, it's gonna be, it's gonna work out where we get the comp picks. So shout out, man! Shout out to uh, Tepper going out and getting these guys, man. And or, I think he felt. Go ahead. Or he could be our next GM. You never know. True that. That's gr- great point. Great point. I, and I think, I think, truth be told, I, and it's to that to your point, Dave. I think that's why he left the Cardinals because he was interim co GM for the Cardinals and uh, it, they didn't promote him. They went elsewhere. And so I think that kind of pissed him off. And uh, he's like, yo, I'm out. I'm out. I'll so I, and rightfully so. Yeah, rightfully so. Rightfully so. You know? So shout out to um, man. I love this hire. This is a great hire. This is an excellent hire. Excellent hire by a Tepper. Great hire. So with that said, Dave. Uh, th- we do got the combine coming up. We got the combine mm-hmm. coming up this week. Um, I don't have a slide for it, but let's go ahead and talk talk the combine, man. Um, I think there's a couple of folks not participating, um, and I think it's you know <laughs> everybody's getting on Bryce Young. I don't think he you know he, he not going. Uh, I don't think he, he wants to he get measured. Gonna, he ain't gonna get measured at all. He said yeah. y'all ain't gonna get on my height. Y'all Fact. ain't slandering my height all week. Facts, facts. So, dude said, "I'm not, I'm not participating," which I can't really blame him at that point. I think that's a that's a smart move by him, especially if he's gonna come in pretty short. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I think I think this. I think he has a legit, legit chance to take a a, a long slide during the draft, bro. Nah, I think he's gonna. Long slide, bro. I don't know, man. I think he's. I think it's. Uh, I think it could happen. He's not so. A long slide. So real quick before before we get into the combine, because I do want to. I want to say a couple things about the combine. Um, I shout out to my man Math Bomb at Math Bomb on Twitter, because you know this is the time where we start to put together that spreadsheet 
and we we start to point out who has like the RAS scores, and we start to look at all that stuff. Bro, I was on Twitter this weekend, and I saw one of the crazy. I saw this this whole thread by the Mad Bomb guy, and it it was crazy. So, and we some people talk about oh the RAS score isn't isn't relevant. It shouldn't people shouldn't pay attention to it. Well, bro. Uh, he said there are 1,920 players in the NFL on, on NFL rosters uh, who have posted RAS scores. 81.35% are rated five or above, with only 18% rated below average, right? He said four, uh, 41% of those guys are above an eight. 41% are above eight. And they're in that elite elite athletic range when compared to their peers. When I saw that, I was like, "Yo, the, the, this RAS thing, there's there's some there's some cooking to it." And and what's what's crazy is he broke is a whole thread. He broke it down and was like, "Yo, it it really applies to uh to certain positions more than others. Obviously, for quarterback, it don't really matter too much. It don't matter for that. Um, yeah, for tight ends, it don't really matter much. But, but defensive line, the defensive linemen." And linebackers, like it was linebackers, it was crazy. Like it was like below ten percent uh, had below average uh, uh, RAS grades on active rosters. Like the majority of these guys, like over fifty percent of these guys, are above uh, eight ranges, but are above eight in the RAS. Mm-hmm. So when you it, again, when you when we start to point out these RAS scores and they start to drop, you. We're going to look at those and be like, yo, all right, especially for linebackers, right? Jack Campbell, for instance. We love Jack Campbell. Yo, but how is he going to line up with the Raz? I think that's important, bro. That is that is very important. So I'm I'm interested as these Raz scores come out and I, I put them and I overlay that with the quarterback, or excuse me, with the um, with this this chart that shows it. I'm going to be like, yo, this is this is crazy. So and another one that was w- really interesting was the center. The center had a high, yeah, that yeah high elite. For that. Yeah, elite. You have to because scores. think about it, man. That man got to hype the ball, and then got to get ready to block. You gotta have some right. speed for that shit. You gotta have some speed, <laughs> like you. Right. People underrate how hard that position is to play. Like I think it's a very underrated position on the offensive line. Left tackle is important. But the center's got to be able to call those reads. He's got to be able to have some situation awareness with everything's going on on that line. Yeah, like yo. Yeah, let me let me link the thread because it was it was a very I was like, from an analytics guy, man, I it it, it really was intriguing to me to look yeah, at I'm that because I'm about to pull it up. On I just linked it. Quick. I just linked it in the uh, in the in the chat if y'all want to see it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Click on that and, and check him out. Like and he's the one that puts the he's the one that's developed the whole Raz scoring system and and he does a great job with those and putting those out. So I appreciate that. And I wanted to make sure y'all follow him on Twitter at Math Bomb. I see. I'm gonna see if I can get him on the show. I'm gonna see if I can get him on the show because this 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 is really good work. Really good work. But it's it's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, let's see here. Aggie Pride says better, uh, better to trade, trade with the cards in my yeah, point. yeah. Depends. Yeah, on, no. depends on how he left. <laughs> depends on how my man Adrian left, but he probably left cordially. No, I think they're talking about the draft trade with the Cardinals. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I am too. Ch- trying to get up to the three, and I heard, I did hear that that. Just going over some of these rumors. I, that, that is a, another thing I wanted to do was go over these rumors. And the first one is essentially the Cardinals are open for business of pick number three. So, obviously, they're smart. Hey, I know some of y'all want these quarterbacks. If one of those guys decides to go defense in the top two, you know, there's going to be, like, let's say, hypothetically, the uh, the Bears don't trade that pick. I don't see for, I don't see any reason for them not to, but if they don't, uh, you know, they're going to take a defensive player. And if, if if they do take a defensive player, one of those quarterbacks is going to be available. But according to the new GM, uh, Monty Ossenfort, uh, he says the cards are, uh, are opening up the up the trade block, pick number three. All right? So that's that's something to keep an eye on. Uh, nothing is guaranteed, but the, they, uh, 
the 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 so the phone I'm lines ask, are open. I'm gonna ask you a question, Rashad. Go ahead. Who do you think have the highest RAS scores for the Panthers? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Burns. Burns has a nine point nine. Chin. Chin, where's Chin? Chin's not on the first page. Hold on, let me see. Where's Chin? Who's the highest? Uh, we got a couple tens. We got uh two. T- oh, Chin is a ten. Shit, damn. Chin's a ten. Yeah. Spencer Brown's a ten. Yep. J.C. Horn's a nine point nine nine. Do you know who's fourth? I, rem- I remember that. I do not. C.J. Henderson, nine point nine seven. God, that's my guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I hope he, uh, man, I hope he turned it around, man. Br- Br- Brandon Smith is a nine point nine seven as well. The yeah, we some, hey, you know, y'all, y'all know Brady we had the all Raz. Brady Curtis is a nine point eight four. <laughs> you know, we, you know, we got the all Raz team. That's what, that's what. Rule. Oh yeah, that Matt Rule, Matt Rule loved the Raz, loved the Raz. He loved the Raz, loved the Raz. Yeah, too bad he couldn't coach it. That's the other piece of it, right? You got to be able to coach yeah. it once you got it. Ian Thomas is a 9.3. DJ Moore is a 9.65. Yeah, Ian Thomas is a 9.3. The lowest nine we have is Amari Barno. Amari Barno is a 9.18. And then after that, everybody else is under a nine. Andre Rob is an 8.93. What's wrong with saying Raz? But... Uh, let's see here. Real quick. Uh, oh, are you done, Dave? My bad. No, I'm done. I'm done. All right. So uh, an AFC executive comes out and talks about Bryce Young's size. Pause. Uh, but he said, yo, 194. It, that's, 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 that's light. 194 is light. An NFL exec, or AFC exec says, uh, his stature is a major deal. And I don't think it's about the height. I think it's about his his weight too. Um, they're scared to death to select him at the top of the year's drafts. They scared, bro. That's it from an AFC exec. Exec. If you uh, scared, say you scared. Right, right. Uh, so again, the Commanders are in on, on quarterback as well. So you got to keep an eye on them. Uh, I think Rivera came out and said that Sam Howell is not going to be the starter. So they're going to be doing their their due diligence on the quarterbacks. That's another team to watch that could jump up. Got to keep an eye on that. Uh, Anthony Richardson. Anthony, they're talking about Anthony Richardson. NFL teams are split on Anthony Richardson. Uh, Jeremy Fowler says, I can't remember a bigger variance league-wide on a feeling about a quarterback than Anthony Richardson. Yep, that's what they're saying, Dave. Uh, the Washington situation is fascinating. When We knew they were going to release Wentz, but... You know, it didn't take Eric Mean and me that long, how huh, to be like, yeah, man, yeah, you got to go. You ain't getting me fired. <laughs> and if they're already saying they're gonna move on from Howard, that means they're definitely gonna probably sign a vet. I wonder, I wonder why, he, I wonder why they're not meeting with Derek Carr. Cause they got talent yeah. in Washington. I don't, I man, they got talent in Washington. I don't care what y'all say, bro. They got talent in Washington. They got a good run game. They got some receivers. They got ter- they got scary Terry over there. They got talent in Washington. Yeah, Jay Haynes says you can't believe anything said around uh, this time of year. It's all a uh, subterfuge at, to drive up the price. This is true. A lot of smoke, a lot of smoke and mirrors out there. It's a good point. Shout out to Jay. It's a it's a very good point. It's a lot of rumors out there driving up. You know, uh, the trying to drive up costs. It's a lot of rumors out there. You're absolutely right. He's absolutely right. I did not see this. He says, y'all see Matt Miller from ESPN said Panthers are le- love AR-15. They also said we love Levis, too. We love everybody. I just know staying at nine, we're going to have a hard time. I think staying at nine, staying we're going to take, we're gonna take whoever the hell's there. That's what staying at nine is going to do. We're going to take whoever's left. If Richardson's left, that's who we're going to take. If Levis is left, that's who we're going to take. <laughs> no, no, they said we need a cap meter for this offseason. Yeah, it's it's a lot of cap out there. Appreciate that super chat. It's a lot of cap, a lot of smoke and mirrors. It's a good point. It's, it's, a, it's a very, very good point. Very, very good point. 
All right, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the combine. I'm going to try to go live uh, when I can, uh, especially for the 40 times and some of the drills. I'll try to go live uh, just to kind of cap my Thursday, thoughts. Right? Yeah, I think the I think the uh, drills and stuff start on. It started. I think it's technically started today, uh, but the the drills and stuff don't start until um, until Thursday. So I'm gonna be on the Roar of the Lions UK with Draft HBCU players on Friday at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Uh, they're gonna be breaking down the Legacy Bowl and talk about HBCU prospects. So I sent uh, my my guy Gerald. Um, he he pretty much breaks down HBCU players. So that's what they're going to be focused. That's the, that's going to be the focal point. But they wanted me to hop on as well to talk about the fact that we've been stealing so many uh, of their coaches, posting their coaches. Yeah, White Chocolate Espresso says Fields at this time was a lock at two and dropped to eleven. It's a great point. It's a great point. Great point. I Appreciate that super chat. You also said Mac Jones is going three. You should have. I bet you the Forty Nines wish you did. I bet you they don't. <laughs> I bet of, you they of course, do. of course, right? Uh, we love tall, big arm <laughs> quarterbacks. Yep, that's what he said, Dakota. That's exactly what he said. He said that's he wanted exactly tall. what he said. Exactly what he said. So who's the who's the tall, big arm quarterbacks in this draft? C.J. Stroud, A.R. Fifteen, Will Levis. Those are your three somebody. guys. So Hooker, Hooker's not considered a tall. Hooker, big Hooker arm quarterback? two, Hooker two. My bad, Hooker two. Hooker two. Okay, well, there's four, four out of five. I don't think he's well. Never mind. Never mind. I think I think Bryce Young probably has probably has the best IQ out of all the quarterbacks in the draft, but everything else around it, like the yeah, no, nah, he's tangibles, like the height, the weight, that's gonna kill him. Yeah, he's I think he's, he's probably the smartest one. Yeah, his his Not pocket presence, his pocket awareness is elite. Like he's got, bro. If he was. If he was if he was six four, he would be number bro, one, no question about it. Yeah, he six would. four, two twenty. He would number yeah, one overall, would. no question about it. But five Easy. ten, buck eighty five. It would that be man a might that, that man might fall out of the top ten. That's wild, but that's the way the NFL is. But he wouldn't be the first short quarterback that can ball. Yeah, Br- Bryce is nice in that, bro. His 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 pocket presence is is elite, bro. I think their concern is his durability. Cause it's, yeah, it's one I mean, thing to you be... look at Tua. Look at Tua, bro. Yeah, look at Tua. Tua was out here like this in a in the Thursday night game. You think the NFL want to see that in a freaking primetime game constantly with a quarterback that's supposed to be somebody that's going to be the face of a going to be the face of the franchise and the face of a face of a league? Because Bryce is special in the pocket. There's no there's no doubt about it. But now you got to trust a franchise to put all the pieces around him to make sure he doesn't get killed. That's the problem. If you got the number one overall pick and you're the consistent number one guy, he's gonna go to a franchise that don't have all the pieces. That man's gonna get killed. That's yeah. all. You know. But uh, so Jay Hayes says, "Did y'all see uh, CMC on busting with the boys? I saw I saw the clip floating on uh, on on uh, Twitter. He he big mad, yo. He big mad." I, I get what did it. What you say, man? No, what did you say? No, we gotta pull it up. We gotta pull it up now. Cause I don't, I don't want to do it. No, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to lie. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Let me see if I can pull it up. Here we go. Hold on. Let's get the audio cracking. You got traded. Is it pissed off? It's so yeah, weird. Like it's the a, very it's first, a weird. Like, it's a weird deal because there's so many emotions, and the first emotion's probably anger. Like, man, you guys don't want me anymore. Like, that's really what it is. You know, you can call it what it is. Well, they got a lot for you. It's like, nah. Like, you're you think you're better off without me. 
that's what it is. So uh, you get that. So it's, you know, you're pissed off, but then you're excited, but then you're, you know, you got two days. So I just think there's so many emotions that get flooded at you at once that you're not really able to address because they give you the playbook as soon as you get there. And you're like, shit, man, that's, a, that's, you know, I got to get going. So you, you can't even address it. And I don't even know if I've completely decompressed yet with the whole thing, but, uh, it's like a big breakup and you don't get any chance after yeah, the, yeah. It's like a breakup it into a next relationship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Immediately. Don't even Immediately. Like, oh, not even like the courting process of the other relationship. Right. Like, I'm healthy oh, to leave this yeah. one. I go this one. Your ex picks your next chick. Yeah. Like, what the hell is yeah. Hey, we're right done, now. but she's yeah, going to be great to be you. Your, yeah. She's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I hope she's good. And she was. Is your. So there you go, Dave. React. I mean, I mean, of course he'll be pissed. You, I mean, you don't think that man didn't, that man didn't expect to be traded? <clears throat> I mean, we talked about it. I talked about it. You talked about it. Other folks talked about it. But I don't think he expected it. I mean, he got that big deal. He probably thought he was going to probably stay in Carolina for life. He didn't ask for a trade. It just happened. So, of course, he probably felt a certain type of way. You know? I get it. He's all right. He'll be fine. I think it worked out for him. He's in a better situation. Got to stay healthy. They're going to manage him. Shout out to C-Mac. I love him. Shout out to C-Mac, man. And it wasn't that bad. Like, you made it sound like it was terrible. I mean. Nah, it wasn't he, bad. It wasn't that bad at all. But anyway, uh, Dave, do we got anything else, man? Combine coming up. Make sure y'all turn it on. Watch CJ Stroud and AR-15 light it up. Outside of that, man, I'm really excited to see some smaller prospects, like some of the guys that are uh, the lesser-known guys that are going to come in and tear it up. And, and uh, like guys like Amari Barno, who tore up the the the, uh, the combine. Guys like uh, uh, Woolen for, uh, from the uh, Seahawks. Like they tore up the combine, bro, and they, they their stock went bananas, and they ended up you know, backing it up during the year. So that's what I'm looking forward to uh, this this year, the combine. Some of those lesser known guys that pop off uh, the tape and we go back or they, they have great draft, uh, com- uh, great combines and then come back and look at the tape and see how they perform. Man, I, I think it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Yeah. There weren't too many, um, there weren't too many HBCU players that made the combine this year. It was only like two, I think. Um, but they had the con- they had the HBCU combine over the weekend, which was pretty good from what I understand, and it, and it was a good reaction. Um, so uh, I'll tell you what, that look, man, the kid from Flam- FAMU, Xavier Smith, dog, dog, and I pray to God that the Chiefs don't draft him. Whew. He's like five ten, runs four three, Whew. buck ninety, put him in the slot, problems. Steve Smith's supposed to break him down soon. I don't know if it's happened yet, but I got to go check that out. But, yeah, man. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I'm i I'm looking forward to see what's... I'll, I'll probably, like, check some of the, the numbers. Um, I'm going to be off Friday, so I got appointments. In between appointments, I'll probably look, look at a couple things here and there on Friday. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, you know, I'm. we'll see... I think uh, all the quarterbacks other than uh, than Bryce is going to do everything. So we'll see what happens. I, but this is where the stocks are going to climb or they're going to fall on these quarterbacks. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. I don't know what data quarterbacks are going to do their stuff, but that's going to be the interesting piece of the puzzle ultimately. Yeah. I think uh, quarterbacks, are sa- quarterbacks are Saturday, I believe. Quarterbacks well, are Saturday? Well, well, I think so. And we'll be live for that, uh, for sure. I think I don't think I have nothing to do on Saturday. We'll see. I got I got a hasty, unless the weather permitting. It snowed last it snowed last night, man. I work from home today. So I think it's supposed to snow Saturday too. So I might be at a career I should be I'm supposed to be at a career fair on Saturday, but we'll see. Because the weather might not allow me to do it, but we'll figure that out. Play that by ear. I'm supposed to get another foot of snow from what I understand. I gotta check the weather. Oh, Jason's saying Sunday. Not Saturday. Quarterbacks are Saturday. Mm. Quarterbacks are Saturday. Uh, it's the second. This Thursday is defensive line linebackers. Bro, I'm looking at the. I'm looking at the schedule. It says quarter quarter. Uh, defensive line linebackers are Thursday. Um, the 
Friday's DBs and place kickers, special teams. Saturday from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. is QBs, wide receivers, tight ends. March uh, 5th, which is Sunday, is offensive line and running back. So. Mm. But, all right, man. I got to get out of here. Uh, I got some things I got to do. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, all that good stuff, man. We'll holler at y'all. And make sure you hit that notification bell, bro, because once I go live, I I don't know when it's going to happen. I'm not going to schedule it. I'm going to play it by ear. And when I go live, it kind of is what it is. So. Lock in, tap in with your boy. Tell a friend, tell a friend, PAP, where it's at. We'll holler at y'all on uh, sometime this weekend, all right? We out. Peace. All right, peace, guys.